Hey guys, Retro Badger here. Welcome to the next episode of the Star Trek Next Generation Final Unity playthrough. This is episode 2, I've put a link for episode 1 below. So we managed to save the space station, and now I think Picard's deciding what to do next. So let's see what we need to do. Mr. Data, any suggestions? I suggest we contact Starfleet, Captain. You always say that, Mr. Dayson. Mr. Wolf, your analysis. Captain, we should check our orders from Starfleet. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions, number one? I'm sorry, Captain, I don't have any suggestions right now. Thank you again for your efforts, but I'm afraid we're rather busy. There's much work to do to recover from this disaster. I understand, Chancellor. We will let you return to your duties. Many, many minutes later. Okay, so it's horse three we need to go to. Engage. I'm not kidding, it just took me about ten minutes to figure out where we needed to go. And I've since discovered it's listed here. Now I did try some of those, but I kept going to the wrong place. So there you go. But it's horse three, the next area. Helm, standard orbit. Alright, so... Now what? Any suggestions, number one? I'm sorry, Captain, I don't have any suggestions right now. Of course you don't. Ah, here we go, Shannock. Greetings, Shannock. Remember this guy? I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Captain, how may I assist you? Very Vulcan. What brings an archaeologist of your stature to such a remote planet? I am excavating the ruins of a Chodak outpost. The Federation Archaeological Survey is sponsoring my work. Who are the Chodak? An ancient race. At their peak, the Chodak occupied most of what is now the Romulan Empire. But I thought all known Chodak ruins were on the other side of the neutral zone. This is the first Chodak site found in Federation space. It was my good fortune to discover it. What have you found so far? A great deal, actually. I have uncovered evidence of an extensive administrative system, as well as examples of Chodak computer technology quite similar to our own isolinear rods. Intriguing. Such devices would be among the oldest known examples of isolinear technology in the galaxy. I hope to confirm that fact. I sent several rods to the Merton's orbital station for testing. They've developed a gravitic stress dating method, which is extremely accurate. However, I have not yet received their results. You know, the way his face moves, it kind of reminds me of AI, like an AI-generated face. I'm afraid we have got some bad news for you, Shaynok. Merton's station has been attacked. It was almost completely destroyed. Indeed. That is a great loss. I'd be most eager to examine the site myself. I can beam down immediately. Captain, I'm aware of your reputation as an archaeologist, but I cannot permit any visitors. The excavation is far too delicate. My apologies. Shaynok, we have several Garidian refugees aboard who are trying to find something called the Fifth Scroll. They said you might be able to help. Possibly. I once did extensive research on the Lawgiver and the Followers. They fled into what is now Federation space a thousand years ago, bearing the Fifth Scroll with them. We've heard of them. So where did these Followers go? I never found the Followers colony. But your friends should not lose hope. In my search, I stumbled on one of the Followers' ancient ships. The logs indicated that they had found an M-class planet suitable for colonization. Thank you for your help, Shaynok. Good luck. And to you, Captain. Live long and prosper. Okay. What are your orders, Captain? I should like to consider the situation a bit further. Chancellor, the Vulcan archaeologist Shaynok sent some artifacts to Merton Station to be tested. Can you give us any information about this? I'm sorry. Shaynok's artifacts were in the destroyed section of the station, as were many other relics we were analyzing. 
Thank you again for your efforts, but I'm afraid we're rather busy. There's much work to do to recover from this disaster. Hmm. Captain, message from Starfleet. Oh. It is Admiral Redrick. On screen. Greetings, Admiral. What can we do for you? Jean-Luc, good to see you again. I have a little favor to ask. Would you be interested in finding a little lost lamb for me? A lamb? <laughs> a figure of speech. I have a friend stationed on Morassia, an exobiologist. I haven't heard from her in quite a while. I'm getting a little worried. I'd like you to check into it if you can. Who exactly is this lost lamb? Her name is Dr. V. Hunforsch. She was on Barassia cataloging local species for the Federation Zoological Database. But no one's seen her for days. Have the local authorities investigated the matter? Constable Lixie, who runs the preserve, thinks V went on a field trip and that there's nothing to worry about. To humor me, she said I should send a team to investigate. Admiral, do you have any reason to suspect foul play? Uh, the truth? V is headstrong, but she might be chasing butterflies. But I think there's more to it than that. And Jean-Luc. Marassia is applying for Federation membership. You could review the state of affairs there while you're looking for our exobiologist. Hmm. Very well. As soon as we receive your report, we'll get on the way. I'll transmit it immediately. Oh, and Jean-Luc, the Morassians have a strict matriarchal society. Males are usually treated as servants at best. Don't take it personally. Understood, sir. <laughs> Good luck. Redrick out. Lay in a course for Marassia, warp 5. Yes, sir. Here we go, auto-navigation. Oh, we got a cool cutscene. Whoa, 57 light years away. Wow. Now I remember this planet that we're approaching now. It's the one with the rather interesting inhabitants. I believe we talk to a bird, possibly. Forgetting. I know there was a bird in a cage. I'm sure it's a bird. Or is it a monkey? I can't remember. Warning. Entering nebula. Oh. Entering non-aligned space. Helm, standard orbit. Captain's Log Supplemental. The Enterprise has arrived at Marassia to investigate the disappearance of Dr. V. Hunforsch, an exobiologist stationed here for the past two years. The three species native to this world have enjoyed a millennium of peaceful cooperation, and this visit will give us the opportunity to review Marassia's petition for membership in the Federation. It's time we introduced ourselves. Mr. Worf, hail Constable Lixie. Aye, Captain. Ah, I'm Captain yeah. Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. We have come to investigate the disappearance of Dr. Honforsch. Welcome to Morassia. As I told Admiral Redrick, I really don't think Dr. Honforsch is in any danger. She's probably on an extended field trip. Good. We'll need your beam-down coordinates. I shall transmit them. And Captain, in order to protect the animals in the preserve, we permit no weapons of any kind on the surface. Our away teams carry phasers for self-defense only. They can be locked on a low stun setting. I assure you none of your animals will be harmed. I'm sorry, Captain. I won't allow it. We cannot predict how even your lowest setting will affect our animals. We will respect your laws. The away team will not be armed. For a male, you are unusually cooperative. Is there any better way to begin a relationship? Forgive me, Captain. I am not accustomed to seeing a male in command. I will await your investigators. Mm-hmm. We need to beam down. Here we go. Be 
Beam down coordinates selected. What I want to know is, on normal starships, not every council is going to be a Betazoid. So, if she wasn't a Betazoid, would the council be going on this mission? That's what I want to know. I'm not entirely convinced, to be honest. Visitors for Constable Lixie. Constable Lixie is present. Hmm. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Welcome. So you are the artificial human. Interesting. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there really is no need for alarm. Dr. Hoonforsch is probably just on an extended field trip. Who were the last people to see the doctor? Apparently, Consultant Idia was the last to see her. They had dinner or some such. It's all in my report. You should be able to access it through your tricorder. Of course. But our surveillance system can detect signs of distress in any of our inhabitants. And we've had no sign of trouble from the doctor. Your tone suggests that you do not like Dr. Hunforsch. She hasn't made many friends here. She disagrees openly with our philosophy, our methods, and has even accused us of smuggling banned species. I would like to investigate the preserved grounds where the doctor last worked. We'd prefer to limit the number of outsiders in the preserve while it is under construction. Investigating the doctor's laboratory should be sufficient. A thorough investigation of the doctor's disappearance will require me to enter the preserve. Furthermore, the Federation Council has requested a review of Morassia. Unhindered access will allow me to prepare a far more detailed report. The Federation's requests are not law here. Mm. Not yet. But in the interests of cooperation, I'll open up the area surrounding my outpost. Be sure to stay within the visitors' areas. You must understand, my responsibility to the animals comes first. The preserve clearly embodies your philosophy of life forms living within life forms to create a single harmonious organism. It is an impressive achievement. Very observant, Commander. Your perceptiveness does you credit. I have no more questions for you at this time. May I investigate the doctor's quarters? Of course. Her laboratory quarters are at the end of the path towards the mountains. Okay. Yeah, I think having a Betazoid on an away team is a very good idea because they can sense, well, emotion. And, um... Yeah, I think... But I, I don't know if a normal counselor would go on an away mission. It doesn't seem like a good idea. I mean, they're just meant to be on the ship, aren't they, for the people. Maybe Troy is quite unique in that respect. I do not believe that will work. Whoa, what the heck? Oh my goodness, did you see that? Should we give a fruit to the tree monkey? Hey, there he goes. Ooh. Oh, I remember this. So, yeah. We have to get a power thing and power up this computer. But we need to go to the laboratory first, don't we? Wherever that is. I'm assuming... Ah, yeah, there it is. That's going to be a long way away, isn't it? <laughs> if you hold the shift key down, they speed walk. Ah, here we go. I remember this. Okay, so we need some of this tech here. We need the bioprobe, and we need these drones as well, from what I remember. Will it let me take them? Oh, it does. Great. Right. So we're going to use their technology, basically, on these to figure out what's going on. Okay. Subject is marked as a Fridnorian boar. Probable cause of death is malnutrition. 
I am not certain this is a Fred Norian boar. I believe it may be an Akana boar, a close genetic relative. Wow, that's a good job we um, brought data, isn't it? I see no way of using this. I see no. Alright, so we've done that one. Subject is marked as a Kujan Gibbon. Probable cause of death is massive infection by Natura parasites. This parasite is not native to the Kujan's habitat. as a myocordae mole. Probable cause of death is neural energy loss. Okay, I think I've scanned all three, unless I just did a duplicate without realizing. There must be something unusual about these carcasses, or the doctor would not have kept them. I recommend full biological and sonic scans. Hmm, sonic scan. Can we do that? Yeah, I used to love games like this in the 90s, where, I mean, like, okay, so it's not action-packed, but it was just so cool. Exploring. Right. We need to use the comm station over here. I think. A massive computer fragmentation has erased the doctor's files. Mm. The only salvageable message from her daily log is sessions with tracker Malas cancelled. Schedule again after field trip. Ah, that's right. I do not believe that will work. There's the com port behind the computer. And we need to speak to... Open a channel to Tracker Malas. Channels open. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Greetings. I doubt oh. that she is in any danger. She's probably just taking a vacation after her blow-up with Constable Lixie. Mm. We found your name in the doctor's laboratory. What is your relationship with her? I teach her territorial recognition. At least I did. We suspended our lessons after the power outages began. I haven't seen her since, but I doubt she's lost. Such an excellent tracker, even if she is a bit weak in the nose. <laughs> this blow-up you mentioned. Do you mean the constable and the doctor had an argument? Dr. Hoonforsh discovered that several animals from Aramut's second shipment were illegal species which had been mistagged. I think she accused the constable of smuggling, but I'm not sure. Healer Zolus told me the story. You mentioned power outages. Can you describe them in greater detail? A power surge at our quarantine shelter destroyed some of the generators. Two watchers were seriously injured and several animals escaped. Since then, we've had outages in the biotopes. They're still under investigation. Without the generator, the individual containment fields in the shelter will not function. You would no longer be able to quarantine any animals for analysis or adaptation. That's right. Most of our personnel are out searching for escaped animals right now. Dr. Hunforsch might be doing that on her own. The watchers feed and care for the preserved species. It's interesting this. I think some of Data's speech is missing. Smuggling is a serious offense. It would certainly jeopardize the acceptance of Morassia into the Federation. 
That's why she thought Constable Lixie might be involved to thwart Federation entry. I have some questions regarding several animal carcasses which we found in the doctor's laboratory. Of course. That's one of the new arrivals from the second shipment. Maybe there was an error. You know, we've had a number of minor problems with creatures from that shipment. A creature tagged as a Frednorian boar apparently died of starvation. Do you know how this could have occurred? Hard to say. The Watchers are quite good. I can't imagine they just let this happen. Maybe they were given the wrong care instructions. Or maybe the animal was not identified correctly. A creature tagged as a Kujan Gibbon died of a parasitic infection not found in its native habitat. How could this have occurred? I don't know. The Watchers are the ones who care for the animals. Maybe they can help you. One creature experienced an energy drain within its neural pathways. It is untagged but appeared to be a mole of some sort. It's probably a Myocorde mole. They're quite common on Morassia. But I've never heard of one dying like this before. Its cause of death is unusual, but not unprecedented. I have personally encountered a species that consumed human neural energy for survival. Is there a preserve animal that might feed on Myocorde neural energy? None that I know of. Perhaps the Myocorde got caught in one of the generator power surges, but then it wouldn't be drained of energy. I don't know. Thank you for your time. I wish you well on your search. It's possible the constable felt that telling us about her argument with the doctor would arouse our suspicions. But why would she withhold information about the escapes? Hmm. Okay. Now we have to get a generator, a micro generator. I remember this. I got stuck on this last time. Uh, let's see. How do we get to it? No, no, no. Hmm. That's right. We go here to the shuttle dock. It's a bit disorientating, like the layout of this level. And there it is. Okay, so we've got the micro generator. And now we're going to have to start powering up those computers. Like a display screen. Here we go. So we can place that there. And that should turn on. Yes, there we go. Look at that. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are the four tunnels within that petrified tree. What the heck is that thing? Oh gosh. Some crazy things in this game. Okay, so we need to send these probes over here somewhere. Let me see, let me see. Okay, there it goes. It's amazing how much video game animation has changed. But it was still pretty impressive, this. I never got to actually play it in the 90s because I couldn't get it running on my computer. But looking back, I'm not sure I would have enjoyed it as a kid as much because it's quite involved. I mean, I would have had some fun, you know, going into Romulan space and randomly getting into battles. But to fully enjoy the game, it's, it's, it's quite grown up, this game, I think. Okay, so can we grab this again? Oh, we can. And it do, let's see. Got a bioprobe, which we're going to use on the thing we just brought back. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our sample now. So when we get these samples, we can then take them back to the laboratory and examine them more. And we need to do the other tunnels as well. So we've done tunnel one. So we're going to do tunnel two now.
The field unit is stalled. It is not configured for this biotope. Hey, eh? oh, that's right. Different probes have different. Oh, it annoys me that they're both they're, they're set up for different jobs basically. So I'm gonna send the one I sent before, which was B. And so you want to use um, bio probe field unit B for these tunnels. Okay. Again, like we did before, bioprobe and right. And there's still some more tunnels. The neural Oops, cells is... of this deceased direwood ferret show unusual readings. Additional lab work would be advisable. Okay. I see no way of using this with that object. I need to put it back in its place, don't I? There we go. There are more tunnels that we've got to visit. Tunnel three. He got his data got his phaser out. Hang on a second. Ooh, continuity error. Or are they strike orders? Because they're not allowed weapons, are they? Wharf, I'm talking to you. Okay. Let's see. There is one more tunnel somewhere. It's where? Oh. oh, it's all the way up there. Gosh. Can't really see it though, can you? Okay. Back to the lab. I can figure out how. Walk the path, walk the path. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna use the sonic scope with these samples. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject contains high ionic residue and trace amounts of neural tranquilizers. Originating creature may consume energy. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. So there's definitely something wrong here, isn't there? You know, the they're mislabeled. They seem to be dying in mysterious circumstances. Analysis complete. Subject's neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Okay, let's go to the next one. So we'll go back to the crossroads. That's like the main junction. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Marine biotope, we'll go through that one. Oh dear, do you know what I've done? You know what I've done, don't you? The micro generator, I didn't get it. Okay, well, I just went back and got it. Don't want to bore you with that journey. So let's put this one in. This here. micro generator is completely drained. What? Yet the charge should have lasted several days under these conditions. Oh no. Ah, yeah. Charging unit. Phew! So yeah, I think I drained it by leaving it in, but just go back to the shuttle dock. This is a topographical and it will charge. Map of the biotope. The main habitats are within the jelly corals and the water. So we need to get four samples from these. Jelly, flying jellyfish, are they? Jelly corals, okay. Can I do it this way? Ooh, I can. That speeds things up, doesn't it? 
I wish I'd known there that was before. No sample in this field unit. If there were, we could extract it with a bioprobe. This should speed things up a little now that I figured out how to do that. We don't need to put it back in the inventory. That really helps. Yeah, it's more like a sort of scientific gathering mission, this, along with being a detective, I suppose, trying to find out what's happened to the research scientist. I do not believe that will work. I do not believe that will work. Hmm. Oh, it's still coming back, that's why. I'm trying to do it too early, though, it stopped flying, which is weird. Last one. Then we've got to go back to the laboratory. Then we've got to use the sonic scope yet again. Use skull. Hmm. Okay, and this time, I'm not going to forget my micro generator. Learned that the hard way. Oh! Need you though. Don't want to leave the field unit, do we? There we go. Back to the lab. And then after that, we've got one more that we've got to do, which is the other place. I can't remember the name of it. Diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. All readings are normal. So far, so good. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification plan. Suppose we're gathering evidence right now. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. All readings are normal. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. All readings are normal. Okay, now we've got one more final one to do. To the crossroads. And let's see, we didn't go down there, did we? Oh, hang on a second. No, it's not this way, it's the other way. I tried going that way before by accident. Right at the beginning of the level, I remember now. Canyon, that's right. Windy. Okay, so... This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are the caverns, the pit, and the crater. Okay. Not use number A, so... Caverns, the pit, and the crater. Pit. Wow, that looks really far away. Okay, that's our first sample. So there's only three on this level. Let's see. Last one. Well, I can safely say this isn't the most engaging mission. Uh, 
Ah, right, okay. So, back to the lab. We'll then analyze those three samples. And then we'll make some progress. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Yeah, that doesn't sound right, does it? Something's definitely up. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. Mm, right, so now we need to use the comm station. Okay. Need to speak to... Yep. Open the channel to Consultant Idia. Channels to Consultant Idia are closed at this time. Huh. Yeah, let's go back to the constable. I'm not sure what's going on here, but for some reason the comm station's not working. Constable, I would like to know why Dr. Hoon Forsh accused you of smuggling. She found a Romulan creature, which is, of course, banned from import by Federation law. It was tagged as a similar legal species. She has accused me of smuggling it in in order to damage our chances for Federation membership. How do you explain the mistagged animal? I blame our supplier, Eremut. He's rude, devious, and barely competent. If I'd known Eremut was a Ferengi, I'd never have listened to Idia's recommendation. But the contract is binding, and he does deliver on time. Those were just a few temperamental generators failing. They've been repaired. Is the Federation now concerned with our internal technical difficulties as well? Why do you oppose Federation membership? Membership in the Federation would compromise Marasia's freedom of action. Some of us would rather not see that happen. I appreciate your candor. You impress me, Commander. It's strange that your creator can find you in the male form. Still, you compensate well. I believe the Constable. She seems genuinely devoted to the Preserve, and I don't think she would resort to smuggling, even to thwart Federation membership. Excuse me, Constable. Has there been any contact with Dr. Hunforsch yet? No, I'm afraid not. Open a channel to Consultant Idia. Channels open. Ah! I'm Dr. Beverly Crusher of the Starship Enterprise. You. I'm investigating Dr. Hunforsh's disappearance. As I told Constable Lixie, I don't know where she is. Must you interrupt my research with more pointless questions? I understand you're a consultant for the Preserve. Yes, I help select and verify preserve species in the biotopes. The Morassians wanted a Federation expert, despite Lixie's objections. They were lucky to get me. You were the last person to see Dr. Hunforscht before she disappeared. As far as I know, that's not a crime. Constable Lixie said you felt it necessary to switch traders for the last shipment, and that you recommended Aramut for the job. He delivers what you want on time. The constable gave me hell when she found out that he was a Ferengi. She barely tolerates me because I'm a male. Animal carcasses in an exobiology lab? Well, that's certainly unusual. A boar seems to have died of starvation. How could something that preventable happen here? Sounds like incompetence to me. The watchers blindly follow whatever care instructions they're given. No personal initiative at all. This creature is tagged as a Fredorian boar. But tests show it's an Econobore, which is banned in Federation space. How did it get to Morassia? It must have been smuggled in. You know, the watchers have requested restricted species before and were denied. Dr. Hunforsch must have found out about it. Why didn't you report the mistagging? I didn't want to. 
I wanted the chance to study it. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Who am I to deprive science of my brilliant research on such a specimen? So you think Dr. Hunforge accused the Watchers of deliberately mistagging these creatures? I think that's why she's missing. When she confronted them with the Akana, they must have stunned her. Those stunners don't trigger the surveillance system, so nobody knows about it. Why would the Watchers smuggle illegal creatures? They're fanatics out to save the endangered creatures of the universe. I've suspected them all along, especially when I discovered this mistagging. You see, these tags can only be reprogrammed by a Watcher. A Kujan Gibbon died of an avoidable parasitic infection. How could this exposure have been allowed to happen here? I'd say it died of neglect. Those watchers don't know the first thing about dealing with animals. They're not scientists. They're glorified zookeepers. Why don't you go ask them about it? A bioscan of a myocorde mole revealed a severe energy drain from its neural pathways. How could that happen? I'd say it died of neglect. Those watchers don't know the first thing about dealing with animals. They're not scientists. They're glorified zookeepers. Why don't you go ask them about it? <laughs> Did the doctor express any concerns to you? Anything she was worried about? When I saw her for supper the other day, she was talking about genetic samples from the last shipment. She knows I don't like to hear people talk while I eat, so she said little else. But the doctor was cataloging Morassian species exclusively. Why would she be interested in genetic samples from other animals in the preserve? I don't concern myself with the lab work of junior scientists. Now do you mind? I have important research to conduct. You've been very helpful. Thank you for your time. Thank you for wasting it. <laughs> Idia's accusation that the Watchers are fanatics is certainly plausible. Collectors can be quite zealous in their pursuit of rare specimens. Idia certainly has a high opinion of himself. The thing he seemed most interested in was his reputation. Okay, we've got to speak to one other person, and that is Healer Zolus. Open a channel to Healer Zolus. Channels open. <laughs> I'm Dr. Beverly Crusher of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating Dr. Hunforsh's disappearance. Mm, a Starfleet officer. I was expecting this. Tracker Mela said you knew about an argument that Dr. Hunforsh had with the constable. Yes, the doctor mentioned it when she asked about Aramit. He's a Ferengi who provides us with alien species for the preserve. Why was she asking about Aramut? Did it have something to do with the mistagged animals in his shipment? Yes, she had spoken to Zudan, one of the three watchers in charge of the last shipment. He told her to talk to Aramut. Dr. Hunforsh had accused the watchers of smuggling. It seems the only way they could do that would be through Aramut. Aramut has a rather unsavory reputation. The Watchers wouldn't have anything to do with someone like that. Uh, but you can ask Zudan yourself. Did Idia know about his reputation when he recommended Aramut? Considering how long Idia and Aramut have known each other, I would think so. Those two go back quite a while. I think Idia even came here on Aramut's ship. Did the Doctor speak with the other Watchers as well? I doubt it. The other Watchers were at the quarantine shelter and suffered some kind of neural energy drain when the generators exploded. They've been comatose ever since. Zudan's the only Watcher on duty now. A neural energy drain? Would it be possible to examine their neuroscans? I'd like to compare them with the scans from some animals which suffered similar injuries. I'll send you the Watcher's neuroscans. You can view them on the bio table, but I recommend you speak to Watcher Zudan. You can find him at the quarantine shelter. You've been very helpful. Thank you for your time. I hope you find her soon. Idia was the last to see Dr. Hunforsh before she disappeared. Idia is friends with a Ferengi, and Ferengi traders are not known for their honor. Perhaps Idia is guilty. The Watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, as did the Myocorde mole.
This bio table has a bioassay hardware to examine specimens and read scans. The watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, as did the myocordae men. Okay, so it looks like what happened. I hadn't used all the dialogue um, speeches or dialogue, yeah, sentences with the constable. And because of that, it, the game wouldn't let me progress. So watch out for that. If that happens, that's the reason. So now we're going to go and speak to the Watcher Zudan, who is at... Let's go to the crossroads. Yeah, this is a very long mission, but I want to complete it all in one go, if you know what I mean. I think the last time I did this, this mission took me at least two episodes to do. I want to do it all in one episode. Ah, there we go. Funny how when Beverly hailed those other people, they answered instantly. <laughs> Don't mess with Crusher, I'm telling you. Saw what she did to that bug cube. I'm Dr. Beverly Crusher of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating Dr. Humforsha's disappearance. I'm responsible for preserve animals, not Federation scientists. I understand the doctor spoke to you about some possible incidents of smuggling in the preserve. Yes, she came here soon after the outages, ranting away. Imagine, accusing me, when I'm the one who told her about that boar mistagging. I'm getting some strange readings from this area. What sort of creature did you house here? A two meter long, 180 kilogram saltus reptile, which came in on the last shipment. I found the watchers next to its cage the night of the outages. It's still missing. I'm picking up traces of a neurotranquilizer. Eremit always doses his animals with neurotranquilizers, just like Idia. We had to feed the reptile intravenously for days. It finally woke up right before the accident, just in time to escape. These samples have the same ionic residue as ones we found near other animals drained of electrical energy. Maybe the Saltus reptile is responsible for their deaths as well as the power outages. But there were no reports of it being seen near any of the power outages, and that reptile isn't easy to miss. Unless it's found a way to turn itself invisible, you're going to need another theory. Mm. When did you last see Dr. Hunforsch? I haven't seen her for some time. I've been busy recovering animals which escaped during the power outages. It's not easy work. The last time I saw her, I sent her to talk to Aramut. I examined the neuroscans of your colleagues. They've suffered severe neural damage, almost as if they were drained of electrical energy. What exactly happened to them? I don't know. During my evening rounds, I found them unconscious next to the Saltus reptile cage. I carried them outside the shelter and was going for help when the generators exploded. You were the one who found the boar carcass? Yes. It died just before the outages, and I wanted her to test it. Why didn't you go to Consultant Idia instead? That's his job, isn't it? I don't trust him. Always drugging and borrowing animals for his experiments. Mm. In the interests of science, he says. I don't know how he could have approved that mistagging in the first place. Constable Lixie said the doctor hasn't triggered your surveillance system, so she's not in any danger. Do the Watcher's stunners trigger the surveillance system? The system only detects signs of distress. Normal sleep does not raise an alarm. Likewise, stunners and neurotranquilizers also don't alert the system. Unlike Idia and Aramit, we prefer stunners. Chemical sedation can be harmful. It seems the doctor's accusations were based on the fact that only the watchers can change ID tags. That's true, but the suppliers tag the animals first. We just match them up with the constable's shipping orders. Idia is responsible for verifying them. 
Is it true that the watchers' requests for restricted species were rejected on several occasions? Only four species out of 112. Of course, we were upset at first, but once the preserve is completed, we can always try again. You've been very helpful. Thank you for your time. Watch your step now. Iria persuaded the constable to use Aramut, and Iria is also capable of verifying this tag species. And he had the neurotranquilizers to knock out Dr. Hun Forge if she posed a threat to him. Only stunners or drugs could disable someone without setting off the surveillance systems. Idia has a supply of neurotranquilizers. Okay. Let's get back to the constable. We've got all of the evidence we need now, I believe. This has been a very, very dialogue heavy mission. I always find it best to use all of the dialogue options though, as you saw what happened there, I got stuck because I hadn't used them all on that person, on the constable. So here we go. Constable, we have reason to believe that Consultant Idia smuggled rare species into the preserve through his friend Aramut. Are you trying to pick up where Dr. Hunforsch left off? She accused nearly everyone else of the same thing. Consultant idiot persuaded you to hire Aramut, and he knowingly verified mistagged animals. He also uses neurotranquilizers, which could have stunned Dr. Hunforsch without triggering your surveillance systems. idiot has been nothing but trouble since he got here. This time he's gone too far. I'll send for him so we can settle this once and for all. Please wait here until Constable Lixie returns. Yeah, I genuinely thought Data was going to use his phaser on the constable when he walks up to him. Whoa! Hello, we're back. Oh, what's this? Constable, we asked Consultant Idia to go to your office. He went to get some items, then suddenly beamed out. He seems to be gone. He must have called Aramid for help. The Ferengi has a subspace transporter. See if you can find Dr. Hunforsch. There's a woman here asleep with a gag over her mouth. Maybe she knows. That's her, you idiot. <laughs> Wake her and send her here. And have a look around Idia's office while you're there. He might have left some evidence. Hmm. Have you captured Idia? No. Unfortunately, he escaped with Aramut. This Federation team was sent to find you. Perhaps they can help. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Enterprise. We will apprehend Idia and Aramut. Forget them. We have to recapture the Mistag Sultis. It's already killed dozens of animals and destroyed several containment field generators. The creature must be captured. Constable, can we use the force field at the quarantine shelter? The shelter force field will not help us. The creature escaped once, and it will escape again. Perhaps we can rephase the force field energy frequencies. The creature may not be able to adapt quickly enough to the changes. That might work, but the only place we can rephase the force field power is at the main power grid. I will go to the main power grid and perform the necessary modifications. Good. The power grid is on the other side of the preserve. Take one of the shuttles. I hate to interrupt, but just how are we supposed to lure this creature back to the shelter? Since the creature requires energy, we can attempt to channel all available energy into the shelter generators. The creature should be attracted to it. We can't. We're using all our energy reserves to maintain the biotopes. The harmonic collector is capable of emitting high-energy EM fields. We may be able to use it at the shelter. Yes, that should do it. V, I'll send one of the watchers with you to the shelter to help set it up. If we can get the field power rephased, we might get that thing under control. I'll stay and monitor the situation from here.
we need to go to the shuttle dock now. Finally getting near the end of this mission. Huh. Okay. Ooh! Right. Ah! I don't believe I saw this place last time. Yay. Got to use this computer over here. The energy fields are responding. Frequency phasing complete. Constable, has the harmonic collector been arranged? Yes, but Dr. Hunforsch needs your help with the quarantine shelter. The only watchers I could find are needed to oversee the other biotopes. We will be there. Just one more thing. Zudan tells me those generators won't hold up for long. And we can't afford to send much power to the shelter right now. Many biotopes are already on reserve power only. We will review the situation at the shelter when we arrive. Where will you be? I'll be controlling electrical systems from my office. Then I have to call an emergency meeting of the Morassian Constabulary to explain just what's going on. Okay. Have you devised a means to trap the creature? It's all set up, but I need you to operate those consoles while I keep an eye on the creature from here. What do you wish me to do? The harmonic collectors hooked into console two. Once activated, it'll emit high energy pulses to lure the creature in. Okay. Ah, oh, neat. Okay, now what? What is the next step? Once the creature gets here, close the gates. The controls are on console one. Okay, let's wait for the creature. Oh, here it comes. Oh, look at that. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Whoops. We just zapped it. Ooh. We did it. Now what took you so long to find me? The investigation was actually quite short in duration. Apparently your absence was not keenly felt. Constable Lixie had attributed your absence to a field trip. She was probably still upset that I accused her of smuggling. I suppose I should apologize to her, now that I know Idia was behind the whole thing. How did Consultant Idia learn that you suspected him? Did you accuse him of smuggling as well? I didn't confront him. I was just looking for information. But after I asked him about the Sultis, he must have panicked and decided to drug me. I should have suspected when he invited me to dinner. He hates to hear people talk while he eats. It appears the Watchers knew nothing of Idia's scheme to smuggle rare animals into the preserve through Aramut. They were the ones who brought the Mistag boar to my attention in the first place. They weren't smuggling anything. Apparently, Consultant Idia underestimated this reptile's appetite for electrical energy. That egotist, thinking he could get away with it. Some of these animals are even from Romulan space. Did he think I wouldn't notice? Are you certain the animals are Romulan in origin? It would take more tests to be certain, but they definitely came from Romulan space. It's not surprising. Aramut does a lot of trading along the neutral zone. What will happen to this reptile? I'm sure Constable Lixie will want to send it back, unless I can convince her to keep it here. A creature like that doesn't come by every day. I believe the captain will want to pursue Idia and Aramut. Will this incident significantly delay completion of the preserve? It'll be a little behind schedule, but I have a few suggestions to help them speed things up. Then it is time we return to the Enterprise. Good luck, Doctor. Beam us up. Phew! That was a very, very long mission. Captain's Log Supplemental. Our successful attempt to locate Dr. Hunforsch has uncovered another mystery. Apparently, the creature responsible for the chaos on Marassia may have come from Romulan space.